Next, let's take a look at the packaging. So I've made an image uh, that will be the backing for a piece of cardboard. So uh, the point of purchase of this hanging on a shelf in a store uh, will have some graphic. Um, so I'm going to make a plane, the plane command, from center. And my graphic is uh, a rectangle like this. All right. But I don't know if the rectangle that I made is the exact same aspect ratio as my as my image. So the technique I want to show you here is how do you get the image on a plane but not distort the image. Um, so let's select that plane, go to Object, add a color texture. I'll select my image, and that goes on to the onto the plane. But if the plane is this wide, the image gets stretched. Or if the plane is this wide, the image gets stretched. So what I want to know is I want to know the pixel dimensions of the image first. So if I click on the texture itself, I can see that it's 800 by 1995. And I'll click OK. Now if I make a custom planar texture map for this plane, and I'll use bounding box, world space, and accept the defaults there. And let me just hide the displacement on the grip layer here just so we don't have to have that recalculate. And if I go back to the texture mapping and I show the mapping widget, it's automatically selected like that. Here in the size of it, I can say 800 by 1995. And now it is the aspect ratio of my image. So it's just a matter now of scaling it down and I'll hold down shift when I do this so that it stays uniform. Now if you want the scale handle to be longer um, before you actually start scaling, just hold down the control key, click and drag the scale handle like that, and release. And you've just lengthened the scale handle, but you haven't actually changed the um, scale of the mapping widget yet. So I'll get it to be about that big, like that. And now one really cool thing is that I can take this mapping widget and I can actually use the corners of it for object snaps. So if I make a rectangle and I choose the rounded rectangle option and using end object snaps, I can get an end snap right there and an end snap right there. And then because I chose the rounded option, I can come in here and I can pick exactly how round I want that to be like that. And then if I take that curve, I can trim off the excess of the plane. And now I've got my graphic that has not been distorted, and I have a surface that it's applied to in the material. And now I'll select that image and hide the mapping. We don't need the mapping any longer. So as long as I scale this and hold down shift to keep it uniform, my aspect ratio will stay the same. And I don't need that curve any longer either. Let me turn back on the displacement for the grip. And then I'm going to select that poly surface and run the command extract render mesh. And then I'll take the poly surface and throw it on its own layer. And I'm doing this because I don't want to recalculate the displacement. And if I select that there and zoom in, you can see all the little polygons that represent that displacement mesh. 
I don't want to recalculate it all the time. And I'm also about to move some objects around, uh, which can cause the displacement to fail. So I'm going to select everything here and group it together, Control G. Rotate it on its side, hold down Shift, and that'll keep it uh, locked orthographically, so it's just 90 degrees. And let's drop it down so it's going to sit right on that cardboard and take a look at it from the side. Now I want a really subtle movement here uh, while I'm rotating. So I'll click in the gumball options and change the set drag strength to 10%. And now I've got a very subtle rotation as well as translation. So you kind of have to move it a little bit more than you normally would. Okay, like that. And I'll set my drag strength back to 100%. And check this out. Over in perspectives, and let's drag this uh, into a good spot on top of the graphic. And it seems to fit pretty well right there. Okay. Now in the top view, I need a cutout for this to hang on a shelf. So I'm going to draw a curve using grid snap. And this curve is going to have uh, just a couple little bubble shapes in it, like those you would see at a point of purchase. There we go, and keep that in line, and then mirror this. Join that together, and maybe I'll do just a little bit of finessing here. Scale these apart just a little bit. Like that. And I think I'll have it just cut the edge of the graphic and the actual cardboard a little bit. And let's also think about where its center is going to be as it hangs here. It looks weird if I do that, so let me... probably something like that. Okay, and I'll turn off the control points and then use this curve to trim my plane. And then I'll throw that curve on uh, my curves layer, which is hidden. Okay, uh, the next thing that I'll do here is probably move this down just a hair and then thicken the cardboard. So the cardboard itself should have some visible thickness. And if I select this trimmed surface and translate it down in the Z axis, I can hold down the control key before releasing and that creates an extrusion. Uh, the only problem is that the bottom of this poly surface has the material for the top label um, as well as the sides. And we don't actually need that. So I'm going to use the extract SRF command, extract this top surface, and that will leave the rest of it as its own selection. So in object properties, material, I'll give it a new material just by clicking new here, and then pick uh, just a basic white material and change that to gray. Like that.